Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. Welcome back to another G.I. Joe comic book review. This time we are picking up the series with issue number 30. This issue promises some good action. I'm looking forward to it. We're coming off a pretty good issue in issue number 29. Recapping the previous issue, we had a battle on the Florida coast. Destro and Firefly hijacked the G.I. Joe hovercraft, the killer whale. It was an epic battle involving sea and air vehicles, but Destro and Firefly escaped. When we last saw them, they were on a fishing boat headed to the secret Cobra base in Springfield. On the cover of issue number 30, we have the Dreadnoughts demolishing a G.I. Joe Sky Striker. It's the Dreadnoughts being the Dreadnoughts. This is a cover by Mike Zek. It has his dynamic style. It looks really good. On the splash page, we have a title, Darkness. We have a creative team of Larry Hama script, Frank Springer pencils, and Andy Mushinsky inks. However, pages 2 through 6 were inked by Pat Redding. On that splash page, we see Zartan and the Dreadnoughts hanging around the perimeter fence of McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. They are watching the G.I. Joe Dragonfly helicopter flying overhead. There is a real McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. It's about an hour and a half drive from Fort Wadsworth in New York. That's where G.I. Joe's secret headquarters is. This is a well-drawn page, and it's very promising for this issue. Even though the Dreadnoughts are not Cobra agents, they are mercenaries that just sometimes work for Cobra, Torch has taken the step of getting the Cobra emblem on his motorcycle, and getting a cobra tattoo on his arm. That is commitment. In fact, I also have a cobra tattoo. Torch and I are of the same mind. Cobra for life! The Dreadnoughts recognize the Dragonfly helicopter from the battle in the Florida Everglades, and Zartan decides to check it out. He disguises himself as Colonel Hawk, the leader of the G.I. Joe team, and walks right past the guards at the gate. Inside the Air Force base, Doc and an unnamed medic are taking Wild Bill off the skid of the Dragonfly, to place him in an ambulance. I am confused about one thing. The Dreadnoughts recognized some battle damage on the Dragonfly, but the Dragonfly that was in the Florida battle was wrecked on the G.I. Jane. I don't think this could be the same Dragonfly. In fact, Wild Bill acknowledges they lost a helicopter. Maybe I'm just losing track of Dragonflies. That's possible. Doc's suspicion is raised when Hawk seemingly can't remember Wild Bill's name. Of course, this is not really Hawk. This is Zartan in disguise. Meanwhile, on Staten Island, right outside Fort Fort Wadsworth, which again is the location of G.I. Joe's secret headquarters, Fred Broca and his family are purchasing a new home. We first met Fred in issue number 29 as the Crimson Guardsman whose code name was Smith. He was the secret Cobra agent with the mission to infiltrate American society. Back at the Cobra headquarters in Springfield, Cobra Commander is taking a phone call from Zartan and getting a report about the G.I. Joe Dragonfly helicopter being at McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. The Dreadnoughts have some time to kill and they're hanging out at what appears to be an abandoned gas station. This is the first time they mention grape soda and chocolate covered donuts. To appease the Dreadnoughts, Zartan uses his holographic projector to transform the appearance of the gas station into the swamp shack they occupied in Florida. Back on Staten Island, the Brokas are moving into their new home and unloading electronic surveillance equipment and assault rifles. Their mission at this location is to observe Fort Wadsworth for any sign G.I. Joe is occupying that base. The two ambulances carrying Wild Bill and Deep Six go right by their home and they are none the wiser. The two ambulances roll into the motor pool, which is the location of G.I. Joe's underground base. But wouldn't it arouse suspicion for ambulances to be taking patients into the motor pool? Wild Bill says, cut that siren. We don't want to get the chaplain's assistance in an uproar. You ever have to mess with an angry chaplain's assistant? Gotta duck all those guided missiles. Guided missiles. You get it? I definitely did not get it the first time I read this, but now I get it and it's kind of funny. Doc and Wild Bill are shocked to see Hawk is at the pit, even though they just saw him at McGuire. I have to point out Hawk's uniform here is almost identical to Duke, only the shirt color is different. Cobra Commander is convinced G.I. Joe headquarters is at McGuire Air Force Base, so he is taking action. He is moving Cobra equipment in Arbco Brothers circus trucks to the Air Force Base so he can stage an attack. What he doesn't know is, back in Springfield, the boy we met before, Billy, is going through secret fire. He is discovered by the Baroness and Major Blood. The Baroness knows him and implies Cobra did something to his father. The Baroness and Major Blood have their own agenda against Cobra Commander and Billy may play into that. Fred gets a call with orders from Cobra Commander. All the Crimson Guardsmen have been recalled because Cobra Commander is convinced G.I. Joe headquarters is at the Air Force Base. That means they have to break down all the equipment they just installed. Fred and his wife throw a Kylo Ren.
Ren hissy fit at this electronic equipment. While they are doing this, they miss G.I. Joe vehicles rolling right past their front door. We see the APC, the Wolverine, the Mobat, the Vamp, and the Ram all rolling out of Fort Wadsworth toward McGuire Air Force Base to investigate the possible infiltration by Zartan. These vehicles look pretty good. The artwork captures a lot of the details that are on the toys. The Ram motorcycle is way off model though, but we can forgive that because the others look really good. The Dreadnoughts are supposed to recon the perimeter fence outside the base, but Dreadnoughts being Dreadnoughts, they cut the fence open and ride onto the base. There they find lots of expensive vehicles they can destroy, which is their favorite thing to do. Cobra Hiss tanks and Fang helicopters are unloaded from the circus trucks, and these vehicles are also pretty well on model. The Hiss tanks seem to be missing their canopies, but other than that, they are toy accurate. We also get a toy accurate Hiss driver, which did not happen often in the comic book. Unfortunately for Cobra, the element of surprise is ruined by the Dreadnoughts. Buzzer cuts through the landing gear of a Sky Striker, which causes the Sky Striker to explode. Somehow Buzzer survives. This alerts the tower of the security breach. Somehow they didn't notice the three weirdos smashing vehicles until something actually caught fire. This prompts Cobra to take the direct approach and just launch the attack. They seem to only have two Hiss tanks and two Fang helicopters. If they do think this is G.I. Joe headquarters, they don't plan to take it down. The Dreadnoughts roll right past the Cobras and they are headed out of there. They have no intention of assisting Cobra Commander, but that leads them right into the Joes who have just arrived. It's really nice to see all these G.I. Joe vehicles in action. I don't know what's happening with that motorcycle, but the rest of this is great. The Joes pursue the Dreadnoughts for a moment, but decide to let them go because the main force is attacking the base. The Hiss tanks are lining up the control tower with their cannons, so the control tower operators blind them with spotlights. The Fangs are piloted by Hiss tank drivers, but that makes sense because on their file cards, the Hiss tank drivers are qualified on the Fang helicopter. A Fang takes out a spotlight, then lines up the tower for a missile shot, then is suddenly blown out of the sky by Clutch, who is manning the machine gun on the vamp. Of course, you can't really do that with the toy. There's no seat in the back to man the gun. That's always been a problem for the vamp, though, so I can forgive the comic book for taking this liberty. The Joes continue to fight against Cobra, and now I'm confused again. Rock and Roll appears to be riding the motorcycle, but there is another person that may be Rock and Roll on the Mobat. Are there two Rock and Rolls? Is somebody just using Rock and Roll's machine gun? The Mobat blows up Cobra Commander's Hiss tank, and Cobra Commander barely survives. Here's something kind of funny. The Hiss tank is so on model, it includes the foot pegs for the action figures. The remaining Fang helicopter rescues Cobra Commander under cover of smoke. The ammunition on the flaming Hiss tank explodes dramatically. The next morning, Ace has the sads because his Sky Striker was blown up. On the very last panel of the issue, we see the silhouettes of Firefly and Destro in the fishing boat as they roll past the Statue of Liberty. Their plan is to get back to Cobra headquarters in Springfield and convince Cobra Commander that nothing is wrong. When he lets his guard down, they will strike. So they have to go from Florida to New York to get to Springfield. Where is Springfield located exactly? Never mind, we don't know where Springfield is located, that's the point. Next issue, Six Will Fall. That sounds ominous. Overall, this was a really good issue. We got our first real good look at the Dreadnoughts, and we learned more about Zartan's disguise powers. We got a little deeper into the Fred series Crimson Guardsmen and what their role is. We saw Billy again, so he will play more into the story. Almost everyone has an axe to grind with Cobra Commander. The Baroness, Major Blood, Firefly, Destro, they all have it out for him. The art was pretty good in this issue. I have complained about Frank Springer's art in previous issues, but this was an improvement. There were a few places where it fell apart a little bit, but mostly it was solid. Even though we got a battle in this issue, I still see it as a transitional issue. The major plot points didn't move forward very much. We mostly moved the pieces into place. Do I recommend this issue? I do, mainly for the development of the Dreadnoughts. The overall plot didn't move forward very much. That was my review of G.I. Joe number 30. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this channel a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. I can only continue doing these reviews with the support of my friends on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. Thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with a G.I. Joe toy review. I'll see you then, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.